It's easy to rely on the research and opinions of people who dedicate their lives to studying ancient anomalies on this planet, but they aren't always correct. Their research and findings are based upon study and teachings from people who are not 100% correct, so a fresh set of eyes is always going to see the things they may be blind to. We indeed have been blind to some kind of cover-up, which may not have been put in place by humans. It's absolutely astonishing to think that for thousands of years we have literally misinterpreted history, but we have. And even in modern times, we separate ourselves from certain classes in society, which include faith and education. It was not so long ago that an educated person would consider themselves too intelligent to believe any sort of God, and the religiously faithful in turn would suggest they felt sorry for their soul. But why can't both be right? Where's the bit in the middle? It is easy to say religion is a hoax and that technology is advanced today compared to ancient times, but why don't we consider religion to be accurate accounts of history? Why would ancient people make up stories about who they were? Wouldn't it make more sense that they were preserving history rather than making it up? When we look at elongation of the skull, which evidence of is widely accepted across the world, we must consider that these beings that these skulls belonged to were actually the Anunnaki, as depicted in ancient texts in depth. These elongated skulls belong to a group of beings that are no longer of this earth. No one knows when they came here, no one knows what they are. One thing is for sure though, they did not evolve on this planet. Reminds us of the Sumerian texts describing the Anunnaki as those who from heaven came. Consider this, the Book of Enoch was an ancient manuscript found in caves in Ethiopia, mostly written in a language called Gies, but some texts is also in Aramaic, Greek, and Latin. The text relates an ancient pre-flood story that entails 200 watchers, or angels, that make a pact among themselves. This pact involves taking for themselves the most desirable women of the earth and mating with them. It also involves using the secrets of heaven and teaching mankind these secrets that were never to be known to man. These watchers had leaders, leaders of ten and council leaders. The most important of the watchers had names that were recorded by Enoch. Simjaza was their leader and he gathered the watchers together on Mount Hermon an ancient place of gathering, where they formulated their plan and swore to it. The 200 watchers descended upon mankind and cohabitated with the women of the earth, whom bore them giants, Nephilim in the Bible, giants of tremendous size. These giants ate all the produce of man, then turned on mankind itself and devoured man and animals alike. The watchers not only bred with the women of mankind, but also bred with animals. They produced what Enoch calls monsters. The greatest of these monsters was named Leviathan. Mankind and animals alike are not able to interbreed between species because our DNA is so dissimilar, but apparently the Watcher's DNA was able to breed with numerous species, some completely different genetically. In Sumerian art, there's often depictions of a half-man monsters, and also the famous Minotaur of Greece is similar in content. Could these be the results of monsters named in the Book of Enoch? The names of the leaders of the 200 Watchers notice the similarity to the 300 Anunnaki in the Sumerian text that came down to earth to administer the fate of man, are listed in the Book of Enoch. Danel, Terrell, Ramel are a few, and most of their names end in El, which means God. El was the ancient god of the land of Canaan. The most famous of a council to the 200 was Azazel. His name would mean God of Hardening or God of Strengthening. Azazel brought to earth the secret art of strengthening or the hardening of metal to make implements of war. This allowed mankind to make war on each other and bring destruction upon the earth. In chapter 8 of the book of Enoch it states, And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and may know to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them. Could the elongated skulls actually be evidence of these beings that lived for apparently thousands of years? As glaciers crack with alarming regularity, Antarctica continues to make headlines. Recently, the interest in Antarctica has been crazy. 
Through satellite technology, we see this presence at the frozen continent, but what's going on? What are they interested in? What if we were to tell you that a global cover-up of Antarctica is reaching a critical stage? Scholarly is seen by most of us as excelling in education in particular subjects. But as far as this takes you in life, it actually blinds you to the truth and in turn, you spread the lies without knowing it and people believe you because you are supposed to be the expert. In this sense, you are a puppet without realizing it. What our government is doing, or the secret government as it were, is going all the way back through the ancient text, taking every single piece of mythology they can find and asking questions which need scientific answers. What they are finding out is what the truth-seeking community has been telling them, that history isn't a myth, that there were beings on this earth contacting the inhabitants on a wide scale. What this means is that the government knows that aliens were visiting the Earth tens of thousands of years ago and making contact. And the reason we find very little machinery or technologies of these beings is because they never evolved on the Earth. They brought these things here to build the huge structures which we consider of impossible proportions. So how much of the planet was touched by these technologically advanced group of beings? Listen carefully. Atlantis was a civilization that covered this planet. The main city was in Antarctica, which is now under two miles of thick ice. Structures all around the world like the pyramids in Egypt and the underwater structures at Cuba and Japan, to name a few, were built by these beings as outpost or embassy type places. It's important to note that recent samples of rock tested from Michigan were 100% identical to similar rock found in Antarctica, suggesting that North America and Antarctica were once connected before a continental drift took place. This would suggest a hypothesis that a similar species of the elongation of the skull would have been present in both continents.